150 year history of St. Vincent Academy. Today we are chosen. Today we are blessed to be in the presence of and to briefly hear from Ms. Libya Baton Jackson, author of the autobiography, I Have Lived a Thousand Years, which almost everyone in this room has read. Ms. Baton Jackson, I want you to know that to the pages of your book touched so deeply and changed us forever. Experiencing through your words the horrors of hatred and prejudice, personified as well as the miracles brought about by love, acceptance, faith, and courage, touched our hearts, strengthened our spirits, and lit in each of us a fire to bring about change in our world. Your courage gave us the courage to be upstanders, not bystanders, to react and respond to injustice and prejudice wherever we encountered it and whatever way we can. So we welcome you with open and grateful hearts. Okay, I have the pleasure to introduce to you three generations of women. And to my right is Laura, who is the granddaughter. And over here, many of you know Emily, who is her daughter. And next to her, we have Ellie. Thank you very much. Your enthusiasm moves me to tears. So don't be surprised if I start crying. <laughs> but thank you so much. It makes me so happy that you read my book and that my life story was meaningful to you. I really love you. I love you all, every face, I love you. Please now, ask any questions that you want. Good morning, Ms. Baton. My question is, when we read your story, an intense moment was your encounter with Joseph Magella. Can you tell us about that? tell you about it. Well, first of all, you must realize that when we arrived in Auschwitz and I stood before Joseph Mengele, we didn't know anything. We didn't know that his pointing to the left meant death. And his pointing to the right meant life. We didn't know that all of us at that age, up to the age of 16, were going to the gas chambers. My best friend and her mother was walking. So my mother and I we were walking behind them. It just meant walking ahead. Now I know because Years later, I went back there. I went back to the, to the selection point. And believe it or not, maybe 20 footsteps behind was the gas chamber. And the left meant going there. And the gas chamber wasn't an easy death. They told us, they explained to us that um, they explained to us that people in the gas chambers trampled on the babies because the gas that the poison gas that was used to kill the people was heavy and the air was above everybody sends the air and they would want to rise up and trample the babies. So the babies even before being killed by gas were killed by the grown-ups. Their mothers and their grandmothers. Anyway, going back to my standing in front of Ben Mangler, 
was really amazing because I did not what he did to me. I did not know that he chose me. Life, life in the concentration camp, but life instead of death. When he asked me, Mr. Yudin, are you Jewish? Of course, I said, I'm Jewish. And he took one of my braids in my his hand and said, was für eine schöne goldene Haare hast du? What beautiful golden hair you have. I did not know that means that I'll be here today. I did not know that means life also for my mother. Because when he sent me to the right, he also told my mother, you can go with your daughter. So that was the moment between life and death. I didn't know it then. I know it now. So many years later. How many years, you tell me? This was exactly in 1944. I am very poor in arithmetic. You figure it out. <laughs> How many years ago was that? Come on, don't be chicken. <laughs> Raise your hand if you know the answer. Okay? 75 years ago. Wow. That means I'm quite old. <laughs> wow. So how old am I? You tell me. I was 14, 13 at that time. 13. 75 years ago. I am so poor in arithmetic. So you have to do the ad. And addition. Please. 88? <laughs> I thought that was 89. <laughs> Doesn't matter. A year, a year, a year. Thank you very much. She made me a year younger. <laughs> How did I find? I tell you, one, I was always very stubborn. My parents used to have no patience with me because when my mother gave me something to do, I had a four-year-old brother and he would right away do it when they told him something to do. When they told me something to do, I always asked, why have I to do that? Why? And so, number one, by nature, I'm very stubborn. Secondly, my mother was with me, as you read the book, that it so happens my mother was sent along with me to the concentration camp. I survived because of my mother. Because I always had to help my mother. If not my mother, I wouldn't have survived. Not that my mother helped me, but I helped my mother. And helping my mother made me, gave me always the incentive to go on because I never wanted to see my mother die. You know yourself, if the question would be see your own mother die, that's horrible. And I never wanted to experience that. So in order to keep my mother alive, I kept myself alive. 
that will sit no other crushed. Please. That doesn't mean you shouldn't ask other questions. Throughout your horrific experience, who are the people with you who are your beacons of hope and help? Oh, yes. You know, that's a beautiful question, but simultaneously very difficult. I don't know if I had a beacon of hope. Perhaps just simply the knowledge that maybe we'll make it. Maybe it's possible to make it. I think that was helpful. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Makeda, and I have two questions. After liberation, how did your life unfold as a family? And what was your life like when you first came to America? Well, I have a simple answer. Read my book. <laughs> <laughs> but I try to summarize. After surviving so much horror, my faith in mankind did not diminish. I did not think that all people are bad just because the Germans were bad. On the contrary, it was always very important for me to find a good person and to appreciate a good person. So, number one, when we survived, I was always looking for good people. Number one. Number two, coming to the United States was a tremendous accomplishment, a tremendous event in my life. Because when we returned home, where I was born and bred, and that's what you call home. The place where I was born and bred betrayed me. There's no question about it. It betrayed me. It allowed my family to be taken away. And many members of my family did not return. So I had no home in Czechoslovakia anymore. The only home was, the only hope for a home was in America. And the United States became my home. I felt very happy in America. In America, people were very kind to me. And all the things that I was hoping for, I achieved in America. I was hoping to go back to school, and I did. I went to Brooklyn College, and later to NYU. And <clears throat> I never went back to elementary school. I never went back to high school. My first class, my first school was Brooklyn College. And I had to work very hard in order to make it. Number one, I didn't know English. English was not my language. I had to learn English and I learned Sometimes I learned all, all night long. It was getting morning of the night, and I said, oh my God, I have to go to sleep because it's already morning. Because I was learning and learning and learning. And I would say to a large extent, learning, studying, helped me to reclaim life learning and life. 
Harder than that. <laughs> My question for you is... is sorry, Abby. My name is Aja. Aja. Aja, yeah. Um, did you ever revisit Auschwitz or any camp? As hot as that must have been, was it a positive experience in any way? Good question, yes. I revisited Auschwitz. I went back. There was a group called March of Life, March of the Living. I joined that group uh, because they needed someone who is a survivor to talk to them on the way and explain to them. They went to Auschwitz. They also went to Plaschow, which was another camp where I was. And they also went to Dachau. So I went with them, and I, all along the way, I was explaining things to them, and I was relating my experiences. It was not easy. As a matter of fact, I never expected that it would be so hard. So much so that when we came back, I went straight to the hospital. I was so ill. I was unable to go home. They took me to, the, to a hospital right as we arrived back home. Thank you. You're welcome. The question is, as you look at world situations and events happening today, what are your feelings and what advice would you give World leaders. World leaders. Oh, they would only ask me. <laughs> you know, none of the world leaders ever called me up and asked me questions. But what I would, if they did, what I would tell them is make sure that there is no bigotry there is no discrimination, there is no skin color difference in your eyes. Whenever you see a human being, just see him or her as a human being. Thank you. First of all, Human beings need love. And I think love is the key. If we have love for each other, if we love every human being, every human being, there would be no war ever. And that would be wonderful if we always had peace. But I believe that Love is the key. I love you all. I really love you. My heart is so full of love as I look at you that it almost makes me cry. I love you. Please. Thank you. You're welcome. My name is Gwazi. And my question is, what lesson do you hope a person would learn from reading your book? Well, number one, as I write at the end of the book, never give up. No matter what situation you are, never give up. There is always hope to survive. There is always hope for betterment. That's very important. The other thing is, I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> what lesson do you hope a person would learn from yes. reading your book? Yes, I said, never give up. And that really is the lesson, that every situation could be improved. You should fight for what you want. 
Whatever is it that you want, fight for it. Don't give up. Never give up. I want to tell you that I am so happy that God gave me the opportunity to survive to this age and don't ask me how old I am. I know, so don't ask. I am older than 20. But maybe I don't look. How old do I look? <laughs> Do you have the guts to tell me? <laughs> what do you think? How old do I look? <laughs> yes? Sixteen. <laughs> Sixteen. That was exactly 29 years ago. <laughs> but I want you to know that I am very grateful to God that he let me live to talk about my past because it's a mission. I feel that it's a mission for everybody to know about the Holocaust, to know about Auschwitz because the reason was bigotry and prejudice. That's what brought it about. If they would have considered the Jews equals, they would have never done to us what they did. They did to us because they considered us not one of them. Because instead of love, they had hatred in their heart. And believe me, those who did it they were not born with hate. People are not born with hate. People are born open-hearted. And everything depends on education. Whatever you are taught, that's what you believe. If you are taught love for every human being, then you love every human being. And even though I was not taught love, but because of my experience, my heart is full of love. Because that's the only solution. That's the only solution for peace, and that's the only solution for happiness. And I want you to be very happy. Always be happy. love and acceptance of all humanity. We cannot thank you enough for having the courage to put your story, your struggle, into words so that we can learn from your life's most important lessons. You are our hero, our example, and we hope our friend forever. Thank you for taking this time to be with us today. We are forever grateful to you and to your family for making it possible for us to touch history today in your presence. On behalf of our entire St. Vincent Academy community, we would like to present to you a simple token of love and gratitude. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I tell you, you move me to tears. Thank you so much. I wish there would be another word in addition to thank you. I should say thank you to you in all the languages of the world. But thank
thing for you. Um, our junior class is the class that found you as we read the book. And so from all of us, we have a picture of the junior class when they first met you on Skype, and they're all holding up your book. Because they'll always remember Ellie. So thank you so much.